Before we start the trammel hook project, I want to look at punching and drifting round bar. I'm going to show three methods of punching and drifting and the related tooling in the preparatory video ready for the trammel hook. Let's have a look at some of the physics that's going to go on while we're punching and drifting the round bar. Firstly, the round bar is not square or flat. No prizes for that. Let's say the same thing slightly differently. Square or flat bar has a flat surface and will resist the punch. The round bar or punching square bar across the corners does not have anything to resist the punch so that this top surface is going to get damaged by the punch for the first blow or a little blip. If we know that's going to happen then why not just come along and give that a slight whack. That's going to create a slight flat, it's going to happen anyway, but the sides are parallel. That gives us a place to park the slot punch and the ability to see that we are running true along the center line of the bar. Another issue in punching round bar is actually holding the stock. My apron is very soft, I believe it's elk, so I can scrunch up my apron and I can hold the bar reasonably um, securely. If that's not available to you, then I've got some automatic adjusting vice grip type things. I think these are made by Lockjaw. And then I can just clamp that on and I can now hold that between my legs and hold the bar securely. You'll notice that when I punch, I'm going to angle the punch backwards and forwards as I see uh, where the punch is going. This is going to sound very Californian, but I want you to look through the bar as to where the punch is going to exit and then trim the punch accordingly. So you're punching along the midline. Upsetting the bar first mitigates the thinning of the bar when punching and drifting. Punching in a half round bottom swage helps control the bar and prevents damage to the underside of the bar. I'm using a three quarter inch half round bottom swage which allows for the bar to spread during punching. You'll notice that in all three of the following examples I'm punching from both sides of the bar. If you're just starting out you might want to simplify this process and punch from one side until you feel and hear the anvil, then clean the slug from the other side. In all three examples I'm using a tapered round drift to drift the holes. You'll notice that when I drift I move around the pritchel hole, or hardy hole if that's what you're using, to prevent damage to the bar during drifting. In this example, I'm going to omit the upset and just proceed to punch and drift the parent bar in a half round bottom swage. When punching from both sides of the bar, I use the swelling created by punching from the first side to landmark my punch on this the second side. I am going to compare all three results at the tail end of this video. For my last example, before we compare the results, I'm going to punch and drift on the flat face of the anvil. This will result in some flattening around the perimeter of the punched hole. I find this method to be the most difficult to control the bar during punching and as such it's my least favoured method. These are the three holes you just saw me punch and drift. The first one was the upset, punch and drift. Next was punch and immediately drift on the uh, half round bottom swage. And then lastly, it was punch and immediately drift on the flat face of the anvil. And I don't know if you can see this, but this one is by far the most robust. This is intermediate and this is the thinnest and it has a slight flat spot on the top where it's been obviously against the anvil. Having a look on the inside, again, I'm hoping you can see that this one is ro most robust. This was the upset. This was punch 
on the half round bottom swage and this was punch on the anvil. So I don't think we can get the money out of our trammel hook by doing the upset so we're going to do A or B. If you've got a three quarter inch for me half round bottom swage then you can go A. If you don't, if you just have the anvil then we're going to go B and punch on the flat face of the anvil. If you like this style of forging, check out my website, markaspi.com. I have three books to help you with your blacksmithing education. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you next time.